the main event bracelet. It is the mark of a champion. Desperately, desperately want that bracelet. Money comes and goes, the bracelet's there forever. It is the singular pursuit of every poker player. Normally I say it's not about the money, you know, it's just about winning and things like this, but with like $12 million, well, it's kind of about the money. Who needs jewelry when there is over $80 million just waiting to be won? The largest prize pool in sports history starts to get divvied up tonight. Every entrant in the main event is going to be making history. The largest poker payout ever. Well, the prize pool this year is ridiculously insane. You could come in like 40th and win a quarter million dollars. It's just, it's hard to even fathom. Sweet, I can use that money. Yeah, man. Every decision matters. Come on. Any mistake could leave you empty-handed. Ah! The race for the money is on. Woo! Day three of the main event. Welcome to the World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Finally, the entire field is in the Rio Poker Room. At the same time, 1,159 players have survived, and a $12 million winner is in this room. Make some room for the bigger boys. Still in the hunt, the defending champion, Joseph Hashem. Phil Ivey is a short stack, but hopes to make a move today while Daniel Negreanu is playing deep stack poker. But the deepest stack belongs to a former car salesman, Dimitri Nobles. All right, guys, how's it going? The grandest <laughs> of all prizes is up for grabs as the run for $12 million shifts into high gear. Hello, everybody. Alongside Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran. Tonight, 873 players will make the money, more than the total number of entrants in the main event when Chris Moneymaker won it three years ago. The heartbreaking news is, though, that almost 300 players will have come this far and walk away with nothing. Some will be ecstatic to make the money. Others have just one thing in mind, winning. And no woman has ever won the main event. Annie Duke, who's at our feature table tonight, came close in 2000, finishing 10th. And as Lon will tell you, we love a lady with a tattoo. That is the tattoo of Annie Duke. It's a work in progress, she says, but uh, she's proud of it nonetheless. 67,000 chips. She's got more than a tattoo, Lon. She'll tattoo you at the table. She can play. Everyone's expecting you to outplay us. <laughs> there you go. That's 22-year-old poker pro Mark Foss. If I had that stack, I might be able to. Those chips belong to... Michael Lynn, 291,000. He won a seat here to his first World Series of Poker in an online sweepstakes. And now here he is at the featured table. And Terry Menzies on the Milwaukee's Best Light Pocket Cam. Ace King. 45. Menzies is going to raise it up to 4,500. The blinds at 800 and 1,600. Back over to Michael Lynn. Just happy to be here at the World Series. He's a 21-year-old cancer survivor. Well, if he doesn't fix the cap sooner than later, I'm going to go fix it for him. King Nine of Hearts, he'll make the call to Annie Duke. Annie finished 13th in her first World Series bracelet event in 1994, and she's been a solid performer here for the last decade. Suited Queen Eight, three to the flop. Annie pairs her queen and takes the lead. Menzies and Lynn both need a jack for a straight, but Menzies would be the nut straight. Annie Duke first to act. Annie with a pair of queens. Comes out with 6,000 chips. Menzies on the draw, gives it up. Now Michael Lynn also on the straight draw. Cap askew, all he has is a gut shot straight draw. And he's going all in, he throws in his all in chip. That's an ugly looking chip to Annie. A very aggressive play by Mike Lynn, typical of what we see these days. He's asking Annie, do you want to risk all your chips right now with a hand that might be a bit vulnerable? Does Annie want to gamble here? A lot of pressure being put on this vet by the young player, and Annie Duke gives up the best hand, and Michael Lynn pushes her out. That's the nature of the beast in tournament poker since the online craze began. Younger players apply a lot of pressure, putting you to the test. A bold move. Lynn, one of the top stacks in the room. Wow, you have a lot of chips. Some of those chips came to Michael courtesy of Annie Duke. With that win, Michael now moves into the top 10 on our chip count with 306,000 chips. Daniel Negrano in sixth place. Top dog is Dimitri Nobles. Other than Daniel, I don't recognize a name there. For all I know, that's a list of Supreme Court justices. <laughs> all right, let's go to the outer tables. And our chip leader, Dimitri Nobles, been a very hot and chatty player. 
Go ahead and fold it. Let it go. That'd be your best play. It might be. It is. Dimitri's trying to talk his opponent out of making the call. Well, even when he doesn't talk, he makes noise. His opponent calls. Dimitri shows the winning flush. Thank you, sir. I told you I'd get them back. Well, one thing I know, you can't trust car salesmen or poker players, so you certainly can't trust a car salesman at a poker table. <laughs> so everyone in the room chasing Dimitri Nobles right now, including this man, Daniel Negrano, who's playing very Daniel Negrano poker. He's got his hands in most of the action. And Daniel wins that pot and knocks off another player, so everyone in the room gets just that much closer to finishing in the money. So a good chip stack for Daniel Negrano. Someone said you were a tight player. Who told you that, buddy? Are you insane? I haven't, I haven't folded a hand in three days. Actually, I'll tell you what, I know how many I folded. I folded 14 hands in three days. You've got to like Daniel's chances in the main event. He's a mature 32 and can shift gears with the best of them. Phil Ivey having trouble playing Phil Ivey poker. He's a bit short on chips. means he can't be as aggressive as he hopes to be. Ivey knows I am not speaking to him again until he wins the main event. So the five-time bracelet winner with some work to be done. <laughs> At another table, the always entertaining Umberto Brennis. And now he says, all-in. Umberto is calling the all-in from bracelet winner George Thomas Huber. Oh, no! And Umberto oh, with pocket no. aces. The TV Shark! The Shark is Umberto's card protector. It's become his sidekick and rears its head in all ends. Brennis in a good position to knock off Huber. Now here's our flop. The flop is six, jack, five. Huber got none of that. Turn card is a five, Huber fading. Huber's gonna need a queen. River card is a king and Huber's gone. Big charm. And Huber, understandably, not amused with the shock. Humberto Brennis gets more chips. You know what you say, char in Spanish? You know? No, no. Humberto. <laughs> and you know how you say shark in English? Shark. He went for the kill, but Humberto always does it with a smile. Back inside the Rio poker room on the KFC Snacker Cam, you can see the field has been whittled. Now we're under 1,000 players, so the average chip count is just under 90,000. The race to make the money continues here at the main event. Richard Brody's still alive. He wrote the first version of Microsoft Word. What I'm doing now is observing my opponents and uh, figuring out their weaknesses so I can exploit them using optimal game theory. Actually, what he's doing now, I believe, is losing a lot of hands. That man right there knows a lot about game theory, Chris. Jesus Ferguson. He has moved the remainder of his chips, 14,500, into the pot against Ryan Colbert. And Colbert, true to his name, makes the call. So Ferguson at risk of being knocked out and way behind. Jesus has been under the radar here the first couple of days. Not much happening for him. Flop, not much happening for him. Five jack ace, Kahlberg with a pair of aces now. Ferguson in danger of finishing just out of the money here in the main event. The king gives Jesus a straight draw. Jesus will need a queen to stay alive. River card is a five of diamonds. Kahlberg wins it. And Chris Ferguson, the 2000 main event champ, is knocked out of this 2006 contest. So Kahlberg gets the rest of Jesus's chips and one former world champion is out the door. Now just three remain in this field, including last year's winner, Joseph Hashem. 15,000. Joseph hooked up against Vaughn Sandman. Makes a bet of 15,000 with the river card out. Pay me off, please. Well, 15,000 more one time. Sandman is gonna fold. And Hashem will take the pot. I talk so much. It's yeah. terrible. I just cost myself 15000 Hashem second-guessing his talk, but as we've watched him last year, he seldom has a hair out of place at the table. Now <laughs> over to 2001 main event champ Carlos Mortensen, facing a raise of 23,000 chips. And Mortensen will get out of the way there and try to get him next time. And the third pass champion still alive is Tom McAvoy. He won it all in 1983. McAvoy quietly folds there. Look at that. The nuts, baby. All you can eat. The nuts. You walk me into the nuts. Chick, chick, chick. Frankly, poker can Thank wear you. on you sometimes, even if you're a former world champion. 
Since winning in 83, he has not cashed in the main event. He's got a chance today. All right, let's swing back over to our featured table. Annie Duke has been trying to get some traction here. She's one of the most experienced players at this table, but being one of the short stacks makes her vulnerable to the young guns like Mike Lynn, who have a lot of chips and plays very aggressively, as we saw earlier. Is my mom in the crowd? Where's my mom? His mom, Liz, is there because Mike flew her out here from Illinois. She's been there for nearly every hand her son has been dealt. Your mom's in the crowd? Yeah, it's like an unfair advantage. Oh, I know. Lots of publicity then. Michael's mom has been his biggest supporter in and out of the poker room, and the bond that he shares with her helped get this former high school athlete through a life-threatening battle with cancer. My senior year at football practice, I get hit in the groin. I was like, man, this really, really hurt. Found out it was a tumor, and they had my testicle removed. It actually spread to my lungs and my abdomen. So then I had to go through chemotherapy. What I had to do was just kind of man up. Since I wasn't able to pursue sports anymore after high school, maybe it was God's way of telling me, Mike, I got other plans for you. Go get him, Mike. He's very competitive and strong in anything he does. I knew he was going to beat it. I wasn't going to sit back and wait for my dreams to pass me by. Yes! Poker gives me a whole different chance. That's how we get there. That's how we get there. When I found out I was in the main event, I called her and I was like, Mom, I need you out here. I can really ask for no better person to support me through this than her. We went up to the Voodoo Lounge, overlook in the city. I said, well, here you are, Mike. You're going to top the world right now. He put his arm around me because my I couldn't have done it without you. I had tears in my eyes. My mom's my biggest fan. It's my good luck, Charmin. It's my rock. I'm very proud of him. He's come a long way. Michael's been cancer-free for over three years and hopes to one day play a more active role in cancer awareness. You what? Why? Good. No, you're not in the money yet, but you're in the money. I'm not too worried about it, Mom. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> good advice. What'd she say? She's like, she's like, she's all right. You're not in the money yet, but I was like, thanks, Mom. Yo, when you bring your mom, occasionally she's going to embarrass you. The money's on everyone's mind, though, Norman. It says 990 left. We're down to 972. Less than 100. They will pay the top 873 places this year. And for those whose bubbles burst, can you imagine outlasting 8,000 players and not getting paid a dime? Mark Foss with Ace 8 offsuit. Foss was nearly two hours late on day two due to a mid-morning nap. Luckily, the phone rang. Foss's name is spelled V-O-S, but pronounced Foss. Annie Duke with pocket sixes. She had a big year in 2004, won her first bracelet, and then won the World Series Tournament of Champions. Annie from the small blind. She has announced a raise, and she is going to make it 10,000 more chips back to Mark Foss. Well, he's thinking it was a good plan at the time when I raised. I don't know now. Are we racing? I don't know. It depends on what you have. Can I tell her what I have? No, actually, that's illegal. Just as I can't tell you what I have. Can I tell her what I don't have? Um, I think that you can only lie about your hand, but I'm not clear on the law. So I have to lie? I think you have to lie. There's poker in a nutshell. You're allowed to lie, but you're not allowed to tell the truth. <laughs> Boss wants the call. But he will give up his hand. I was calling 100% sure if he moved on in. <laughs> Annie Duke got the best of Mark Foss. I mean, I have to win at least one pot, right? I can't go, I can't get on the schneid for the tournament. And he's finally off the schneid, hoping to get on a roll. Shockwaves inside the Rio. Phil Ivey, who was finished in the top 25 three of the last four years, is gone. I'm not happy. I guess he wasn't focused. And hey, we're not talking. Things are happening quickly in this room. Also on his way out the door, 2001 champion Carlos Mortensen. So just two former world champs remain. One of them is Joseph Hashem, who faces a 40,000 chip raise from Vaughn Sandman. Hashem trying to pull a Raymer by going deep against an improbably large field a year after you win the darn thing. I don't think you're going to risk it to one on the side, on the stand. Joseph Hashem looking a bit haggard after working his way through this large field so far. He's going to fold it. Hashem trying to become the first back-to-back -back winner of the main event since Johnny Chan in 1987 and 88. 
No woman has ever won this main event, but Cecilia Reyes is still alive and trying. I like poker. And poker likes you. <laughs> It's easy, you just move on <laughs> Cecilia was the player who knocked Lennox Lewis out of this main event, and she moved all in there and took the pot. We told you Annie Duke won a World Series bracelet, so did this woman. Kathy Liebert often gets overlooked. She shouldn't, she's a terrific poker player. She won her bracelet in 2004, the same year as Annie Duke. Guy came over to me and I asked, can I get your picture? I said, sure, he said, you know, he said I'm a big fan of yours, real big fan. He go, and then he goes, thanks, Annie. <laughs> I know exactly how annoying that can be, Kathy. People come up to me all the time and say, Norman, I love what you do on TV. Good for you. There is the real Annie Duke looking a bit tired right now. Sleep well. At 6.30 in the morning, some guy next door to the house I'm running was decided to start jackhammering a pool. I mean, it was just like, gah, 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 I want to come home. I want to be in my house with my dogs and my kids. And Annie must balance her family and her poker career, but her desire to succeed and her personal fortitude were truly tested in the 2000 main event. I played the final event of the World Series when I was nine months pregnant. I mean, pregnant. Most people would have been peeing every two minutes, you know, and I just sit for two hours. At the tiniest little thing, I'd start crying, you know? I was like a nightmare, like a hormonal nightmare. My back hurt, and I, you know, and I was just exhausted. I can't believe I came in 10th, to tell you the truth. I actually played the best poker of my life that year. I think that sometimes when you're not feeling well, it actually causes you to buckle down a little bit more, not do anything really stupid. A lot of people were like, oh my God, she's playing poker while she's pregnant. Like I'm actually, ha you know, having my baby play poker or something. You know, and I did point out to people it was my job. You did it, girl. I think that you'd have to have a crowd to hold me back from the World Series of Poker. I don't care, like, how much I might be dead money in the event because of how pregnant I am. I'm not missing this. I don't care what's happening. I'm not missing it. I once played poker after I thought I'd gotten my wife pregnant. I never touched her again, and we were divorced about a year later. <laughs> how many more to the money, Annie? 19. 19 more to the money. And you're fourteen thousand dollars richer, guys. Is this hand worth fourteen thousand dollars in cash to you? Many players will tend to tighten up the closer you get to the money, and some pros like Annie often take advantage of that mentality. The top stack at this table: Michael Lynn with pocket fives. Well, there you go again. Annie Duke formed her own production company earlier this year and has a horror movie in development. I wonder if Phil Hellmuth is cast in that one. <laughs> she limps in with king-queen offsuit. Action over to Jim Rudis from Seattle, Washington, owner of a casino and a sports bar. Rudis in the big blind. He's got a 10 and a 4. Okay. And checks his option. Three to the flop. The flop is Jack King. Eight. Duke pairs her king. The other two miss the flop. Rudis first to act, and he will check with his 10-4. Michael Lynn checks with his pocket fives. I'm surprised Annie checks with top pair and a good kicker. Uh, four now gives Rudis a sickly pair of fours. Everyone with a pair. There's a diamond draw out there, but nobody has a diamond in their hand. 5,000. Rudis is going to make it 5,000. He's pretending he has something. Michael Lynn folds his fives. And Annie Duke holding a pair of kings. A raise. And she says raise. And a good read from Annie Duke. She thinks Rudis is weak. 11,000. Got the ace of diamonds, huh? Annie makes it 11,000 more to Rudis. 10,000 more? 11,000 11, more? I'm all in. And this is our degree all in moment. If Annie calls, she's all in, but she's got a great opportunity to double up. And my sympathies to Annie. How do you defend against maniac plays? You don't. I mean, this is a let me bluff off most of my chips move a la Mike Mattisa. Duke has top pair, but does she want to put her tournament life at risk right here? And Annie Duke will fold. Rudis gets the degree check mark and shows the bluff. Boy, that's the old rub their nose in it trick. I don't advise that ever. Rudis wins the hand with a pure power play over the shorter stack of Annie Duke. The Degree All-In Moment is brought to you by Degree for Men, protects men who take risks. 
Attention, main event players. Congratulations, you are all in the money. That is tournament director Jack Effel with the announcement everyone here in the Rio Poker Room has been awaiting. You have made the money. No, we can we can pay we can pay the mortgage now. Yeah. <laughs> Even the seasoned pros feel that this is a special moment. And there is Liz Lynn, Michael's mom, so proud of her son for making it this far. Now we get down to real business. That is the unique vest of Ricky's Miller, who has joined our featured table. That vest is colorful and it's loud. Would it be rude if I offered him like 200 bucks to take that off? It's going to tilt me so hard, man, and I, and I don't need much to tilt me today. <laughs> Mark Foss a little put off by the vest. Jeez, he's the human wind chime with a stokey. <laughs> All right, let's get back to action here at the featured table. Michael Lynn lives here in Las Vegas. Ace nine offsuit. He's going to raise it up to 5,000. The blind's now at 1,200 and 2,400. There's a 300 chip ante. I can tell you like your hand by that. You know, I can still hear that vest. Mark Foss. King-10 offsuit makes the call. Andy Duke folds. Check in the dark. The rest of the table right. folded. Hey, check in the dark, I'm mad for that. <laughs> and Foss has checked in the dark already. Goofy you know, when you check in the dark, you really don't have to close your eyes. It's just a figurative term. Heads up now, and after the dark check, boy, trip tens for Foss in that flop. You have a big hand, too, I think. I hope you don't push. Boy, Lynn's got a good read on a guy who's covering up. Michael Lynn with just the two pair, bet 5,000. <laughs> Don't push. All in. Oh my god, you <laughs> seriously did. That's so sick, Nick. I really did put you on a big hand. Oh, that's so sick. How much is more? I can tell he liked his hand by the way he liked it, man. That's so sick. I shouldn't even bet. I should have just checked. 14-6. Oh, you're sick of it. Oh. That's not much more. But if Lynn saw what he had, he would muck this in a heartbeat. Michael Lynn trying to get a read, but makes the call. Got it. And sees he is in big trouble against the trip tens of Mark Foss. And a shadow of concern on Michael Lynn's mom, Liz. As we go to the turn, Michael Lynn way behind. You've got a monster draw, buddy. Against me, that's a monster draw, yeah, well. <laughs> Club. It's not much of a draw. Six of clubs, that's going to help Lynn. One time, one time. Foss might want to close his eyes again. <laughs> there we go. Lynn now with a flush draw. He needs a club to knock out Foss. And now the river card, a five of diamonds. Oh. Foss will win the hand and double up through Michael Lynn. It's fun to watch a 22 and a 21-year-old in the sandbox playing for $12 million. Nice hand. How sick is that, dude? What a sick flop, dude. It's a great flop. A great flop indeed for Foss, who now has a few more chips to toss around here at the featured table. All right, now that everyone is in the money, the atmosphere seems a little less tense. Things are loosening up all around this Rio poker room. Jeez. I've never seen this. Is there a full moon in here tonight? We've got tattoos. We've got wind chimes. We've got handstands. I'm tired. <laughs> it's been a long drive. That's so sick. Oh, there's Brian Mikon we saw earlier making a call home to tell his family they can pay the mortgage. He caught a 10 on the river. He's got a set of 10s, and he doubled up through Jamie Gold, who caught a set of deuces on the flop. <laughs> ah. what, what am I upset? I flop a set? What am I going to do? No problem. I, I knew I was going to get the river, too. I'm a lucky guy. Lucky and old, he's 27. Brian, very animated, loves to be the center of attention. Elsewhere, there's a man who is used to being at center stage. There's Sully Erna, lead singer for Godsmack. Godsmack, what do they do, gospel? Sully has made the money, but no matter how well he does here, probably won't give up the day job. See the vein in my neck on that one? Dun, 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 dun. Erna was one of a number of celebrities who played in this year's main event. He is the last remaining celebrity in the field. Meanwhile, a man who did give up his day job after winning the main event last year, Joseph Hashem, 
has been raised enough by Vaughn Sandman to put Hashem all in. Hashem has nearly 100,000 chips remaining. I know you're not making a play. I might just call out a frustration. Actually, Sandman is making a play. Because nobody folds his hand. It's a remarkable play. Sandman's played very tight, solid poker all day. So Hashem thinks he's got a big pair right now. No one folds his hand. No one. Sandman's got Hashem a little flamouched at the moment. Hashem with the ace king. This would be a difficult lay down, and his wife Jennifer looks as anguished as Joe does right now. You tell me if anyone folds his hand. And Joe does lay down the ace king. And Vaughn Sandman shows Hashem his ace queen. A bold move at the right time by Vaughn Sandman gets the better of Joe Hashem, and Hashem hates to see that he was played, and the defending champ will walk away and try to cool down. The World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Main event. Back inside the Rio, again, everyone here has made the money, and the action is fast and furious. Dimitri Nobles re-raised his opponent, Mitch Shook, all in, and Shook has called. You got the size of church bells, buddy. <laughs> Shook, though, with pocket aces, has the lead. Dimitri emblematic of the wild, erratic play out here. There's the flop now. Deuce six, deuce, no help to Dimitri. Dimitri's been pushing a lot of chips back and forth, and he's about to push some back to Shook. And now the turn card is a three of clubs, and that'll do it. Dimitri drawing dead, going to the river. Woo! Shook doubles up. Shook, a pro from Bismarck, North Dakota, picks up more than 100,000 of Dimitri's chips. Nobles, once our chip leader, has been leaking in a bad way at this table. One player who usually goes through a tournament without much chatter is that man, Alan Cunningham, quietly building a big stack. Cunningham put a bet out on the river. He's been called. Cunningham wins the pot. Cunningham, a four-time World Series bracelet winner, is so quiet sometimes you forget he's here until you take a good look at his big chip stack. So Allen gets richer, but at the other end of the spectrum, Daniel Negreanu, he has gone from one of our chip leaders to one of the short stacks. What are you going to do, right? Now what Daniel has done is pushed all his chips into the pot. 34,600 to you. Do, 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 do. Daniel going all in with the usual smile. And he will induce a fold from his opponent, and Daniel will survive. He's got too many black chips. They're not worth a whole lot. He needs the other colors. Back at the featured table, Annie Duke garnering some attention with her tattoo. Say yes when nobody asks. Say yes when nobody asks. I'm not quite sure what that means, but we are sure that there is an alarming trend toward poker tattoos as we find out in this edition of The Nuts. People have poker tattoos? I've seen some funky ones. I do like the guys, they have the little ace up their sleeve. I've seen a lot of poker tattoos at the table and I just say to myself, God, what were these guys thinking? Two kings, but they're nestled between two naked breasts. A wolf carrying a ten deuce in his, in his mouth on his, on his shoulder. You can flex your bicep and then change it into, like, King Jack. You haven't seen that one? I actually have one. Um, it's a picture of Phil Helma tattooed on my ass. Wow. Poker tattoo removal is going to be a big business. Must have taken this guy longer to get this tattoo than he has stayed in this tournament. <laughs> People are like, oh, did you win? No, I didn't even last five minutes. Awesome tattoo guy. Very, very nice. <laughs> I think if you look at the group of like the best players in the world, can't think of one that has a poker tattoo. <laughs> the instant you see someone with a poker tattoo, you know they have no game whatsoever. None. I would never get a tattoo. I'm 78, what am I gonna do with a tattoo? Could you imagine the desperation of someone who wants to be part of something so badly that they defile their body? You know they can't be buried in a Jewish cemetery once they tattoo themselves. You know, Annie Duke had a plot in a Jewish cemetery, and now it's for sale. <laughs> Annie likes her tattoos. Ricky's Miller loves that noisy vest. Um, that is some vest. Can we ask you something? <laughs> Are they allowed to have noisy clothes? Uh, it's really honestly, the clothes ring the whole time. You shouldn't be able to wear that vest. A brouhaha. Right here. Okay, thank Come you. Here. Yeah. Are Annie Duke and Mark Foss really asking to have Miller's vest removed? Your favor, even though you got a cool vest and stuff. I'm going to ask you to take it off because it's kind of a to the table. 
I'm real sorry. What's going to happen? Put it on the side over here. The vest has to go, though. I've got to tell you, of everything I've seen worn in a card room, I can't believe this vest gets banned. We get to wear it tomorrow. We'll lose it. You guys want me to take out this one, too? That could. <laughs> that shirt is suspect. Well, Mark Foss and Annie Duke get their way, and the vest will sit on the sidelines. But Miller's cigar remains at our featured table. 21-year-old Michael Lynn with 10-7 of hearts. And he'll make the call of the big blind. What's he looking for his mother? She can't help you when you're playing 10-7, son. <laughs> Foss folds. Annie Duke gets out of the way. Look at that shirt. That shirt is the problem. <laughs> Action fold is due Terry Menzies from Regina, Saskatchewan. Uh, what's the 1,200 to call? He is in the small blind, so he gets a discount. I'll call. And with his king eight of clubs, he will limp right. in as well. Kevin Aronson. In the big blind. Queen 10 offsuit. Run it. He says, go ahead. Checks his option. Three players to the flop. And it is queen four. Queen Aronson hits trip queens. Menzies picked up a club flush draw. He'll be first to act. He checks. Aronson now with the three queens. He comes out with 7,000 chips. Aronson won't slow play this. He might want to knock out any potential flush draw. Michael Lynn, who's drawing dead, but he's going to raise it up 13,000 more. Looks like Michael might have picked a better spot to make a bluff. Menzies will fold. And now back to Aronson. Aronson with the three queens and the check mark. And he'll make the call. I guess it's possible Aronson fears that Lynn actually also has a queen with a better kicker. So now to the turn. It's a five of diamonds. Aronson checks. 22. And Michael Lynn's going to take another shot. 22,000 chips. If there were a neighborhood watch program around here, they could report a crime in progress. Lynn trying to steal this away from Aronson, and it's not a good time. And he makes the call. He's not going anywhere. Michael Lynn eyes his opponent carefully. River card, a meaningless nine of diamonds as Lynn is drawing dead. Aronson again checks. Lynn can only win by firing one more time and forcing Aronson out with a bluff. Does he have it in him? 35. He does. 35,000 more. The kid won't give up. 35? 35. I don't blame him. Lynn's already inserted most of his body into the vice. You might as well stick your head in now. <laughs> He's got to hope Aronson's on a club draw and never got there. Call. Oh, yeah. He didn't see <laughs> Lynn still feigning strength. Now nah, you really threw me off guard. He's hoping Aronson will lay this down. I played this so slow that I think you think I'm on a close draw. Lynn transmitting fold, fold, fold vibes to Aronson. Call. He makes the call, though. And Lynn just mucks his cards. Oh, and Lynn is disgusted with himself more than anything else. Oh, and don't go cry to mom. See, she won't even talk to you. Kevin Aronson with the win. Michael Lynn gets points for persistence, but it cost him a ton of chips. The World Series of Poker Championship Moments. When there were 100 left, I thought I could make the final table from here. What a huge pot that was for Joseph Hashem. Once I've made the final table, anything can happen. Joseph Hashem has got a 2-1 to one chip lead. When we sat down and played heads up, I thought, if I flop the hand that I need to flop here, I can get all these chips. A flop is 4, 5, 6. Hashem flopped a straight. I had the goods, so I bid into him to, to get him to raise it. All right, stop. I'm all in. I'm all in. And Daneman bites. Oh, the bracelet all but around his wrist now. Wait, there's one more card. It's a four, and there you have it. Best feeling. <laughs> Great feeling. Hashem turned 7-3 off suit into 7.5 million. Oggy, oggy, oggy! What a memorable tournament that was in 2005, but the world champ having trouble today with... Vaughn Sandman to his left. Sandman throws in a bet. Hashem throws in his cards. 
just can't shake them. Now to Tom McAvoy, the other world champion left in this field. McAvoy moved all in and doubles up. McAvoy munched on apples at the final table when he won the big one in 83. He's not ready to go to the grocery store quite yet, but he's moving along. Our one-time chip leader, Dimitri Nobles, has been running hot and cold. I told you, you couldn't put me on a hand. Dimitri has raised enough to put Shook all in. Well, gang. And a big decision to Mitch Shook again. <laughs> What's up, Mitch? I call. He wow. makes the call. He's all in against Nobles again. Who got caught, huh? And Shook oh. turns over a set of nines. Dimitri yeah. Marks. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, boys. Yeah. Shook doubles up again. That's what I'm talking about. Nice hand. Boy, Dimitri's tossing chips around like they're plug Welcome nickels. Back. Your dreams are your ticket out. Welcome back, Mr. Shook. You have a healthy chip stack once again because of this man, Dimitri Nobles, who's been especially generous. Back to our featured table at the World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Annie Duke looking to make something happen, but having trouble today. I hate poker so, so much. I really don't care anymore. Neither do I. I just want to go home. OK, do you want to go all in blind next hand? No. Yeah, then you can. Do you want to go all in blind if next you, hand? If you will go all in over the top of my all in blind, I will go all in blind. I have more chips than you. I have to care a little bit more. Well, then you can. Slightly more than you but not a lot. Those are two troubled, wayward poker souls. <laughs> <laughs> All right, action on Ricky's Miller. See what I had? On the Milwaukee's Best Light Pocket Camp. Miller likes that, got an ace, he's got a king. Six, Suited in spades, and he raises it up. It's 12,400 now. Action to Aronson, he will fold. Rudis gets out of the way. Over to Michael Lynn now. Michael Lynn with pocket aces. What was the race? All four. All four. The dang. I normally do all day. Lynn has been the king of the table. He's going to raise it up now to 36,000 total. It gets Foss out of the way. Annie Duke. Jack 10 goes into the muck. The raise now back to Miller. I call that one. He's going to call it. Actually, I think Miller had enough chips on his sleeves to call that bet without having to reach into his stack. It was 24,000 more. Michael doesn't look pleased with the call, but he's got aces against the ace king, and Miller paired his king, but it's not enough. That's a dangerous spot for Miller. He's got top pair, a top kicker. All in. He likes it, and he moves all in. Oh. And certainly a call from Michael Lynn. A resigned call. Go ahead. Lynn looks like he's lost, and of course he's got a hammer lock on his hand. Lynn's aces against Miller's kings. Mom doesn't look too happy either right now. Now here we'll go to the turn. Michael Lynn with a chance to knock off a player in Ricky's Miller. And now the turn card as a queen that misses Miller. Miller perhaps down to his final card. He will need a king, and a king only, or he is wamboozled. Now the river card is an eight, and that will end it. Michael Lynn takes the pot, which includes all the chips of Ricky's Miller. Don't forget your vest. Miller is eliminated from this main event, and finally some smiles break up for Michael and his mom, Liz. Where's the floor, man? I need my vest. Well, 21-year-old Michael Lynn continues to roll here at the main event. Back at the Rio, Daniel Negreanu is short stacked and all in. 21-5 approximately exactly. 21-5. One time offer. 21-5, 21-5 to the big blind, 21-5, 25 to the big blind, 25 to the big blind, I go to the big blind. We'll give you 19-5, 19-5, make it 19-5, 19-5, going once, going twice, sold to the big blind. <laughs> nah, I'd rather see you sit there with 20,000, not 40. <laughs> smart thinking, smart thinking. Daniel, always worth the price of admission. I'm going to buy this one. I'm going to buy this one. Anybody get a hand, I'm buying it. And as Dimitri Nobles, he is all business now after giving away a lot of his chips recently. Well, Dimitri's got the old salesman's mantra, make the customer say no three times. He's always working. Pushes it in a big bet. 
He's not calling. I'm all in. Call. He is calling. Dimitri with Queens. His opponent turns over no, ace right. 10 for his tournament life. Yes, come on. Dimitri oh, hangs oh. on through the flop. Oh, baby. Turn and river card. Send him out on the stretch. Means Dimitri wins the hand and knocks off another player. Good game, baby. That's going to help. That's going to help. That is about 160,000 chips, and that will help Dimitri Noble. But Dimitri should watch his words. The reckless way he plays, that stretcher might soon be coming for him. All right, let's get back to our featured table here at the World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. The chip average now well over 100,000. Annie Duke under 70,000 here at the featured table. There's Robbie Robertson from Palm Desert, California, not the musician. Ace Queen offsuit. I'm a big one. Robertson will call the big blind, which is 2,400 chips. Annie had a TV special called Annie Duke Takes on the World. That's what this feature table must feel like to her today. She just hasn't been able to get anything going. And with pocket tens, Annie will just call the big blind. Action to Terry Menzies. And the small blind. Queen seven offsuit. And Menzies will limp in as well. Yeah, that's limping all right. That thing should have limped out of here. Kevin Aronson, nine three of diamonds in the big blind. He will invest no more chips, so four players will go to the flop. Annie Duke in the lead with her pocket tens, and Aronson hits trip nines in that flop and in commanding position. And that's a disaster flop for Annie Duke with her pocket tens. Menzies first to act. He checks, drawing dead. Well, at least he has the sense to check. Aronson now with his trips, he'll check also. Robertson with ace queen. Follows suit. Annie Duke with her pocket tens. And she's going to bet. Annie Duke makes it 8,000 to go. Menzies folds. And Annie Duke staring at some troubled times in this hand. Aronson with trip nines. He had checked, set a trap, and now he's going to check raise. And he raises it to 26,000. Robertson gets out of the way. Now up to Annie Duke. And these are precarious waters for Duke. You know, she hasn't been feeling well today. She only slept three hours last night because of that jackhammer she talked about. Has not played her best poker. Frankly, she might think her pocket tens are best right now. I don't blame her. But she's staring at a world of hurt right now if she continues on in this hand. I'm all in. And Annie Duke is going to push. Count it out, please. 38-7 more. I think he got eight, nine clubs. Annie Duke risking her tournament life on the pocket tens. <sighs> I don't think you're going to put your tournament on a flush draw. He's right about that. She wouldn't put her tournament life at risk on a draw. He's worried she has a nine in her hand with a better kicker. <laughs> well, I got outs. Casey got eight, nine. I call. And he will call. And Annie Duke now appears headed for the nearest exit, her tens against the three nines of Aronson. Well, two mistakes cost Duke dearly here. She didn't raise pre-flop when she had the best hand. Then she raised all in post-flop when she was dead in the water. All right, now the turn card. Two of clubs, no help to Annie Duke. And Annie sees the writing on the wall. She would need a 10 and a 10 only or her 2006 main event is over. Oh, and she got it! <laughs> Annie Duke hits the miracle 10 on the river. Oh my goodness. Welcome to the title. I am so sick. No, 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 that was brutal. Brutal for Aronson, beautiful for Annie. That river 10 just might lead her to the promised land. Annie Duke doubles up. And oh she is God. over 140,000 chips now when it looked like she was out the door. When the day began, everyone had just one goal, to make the money. How many more till the money? And one by one they fell. Richard Brody's game theory was less than optimal. The Matador caught the wrong end of the bull, and the curtain finally fell on Sully Erna. Oh.
But even with the shark circling, the game's greats manage to survive. From big stack to short stack, Daniel Negrano will need some luck to get back in the fray. Joseph Hashem eventually regained his composure and some of his chips. Annie Duke has a new lease on life after her river miracle. And a former car salesman, Dimitri Nobles, hit some bumps in the road. But continued to ride his rush to finish the day second in chips. Send him out on a stretch. Will Nobles continue his run for the riches, or will another new face claim the most coveted title in poker? For Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran from the Rio and the World Series of Poker.